going on, everybody? What's going on? Uh, well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, How's it going? <laughs> it's going, man. I'm just, uh, you know, been up for about an hour now. Was talking to the team about a few things and hopped on. What's up, Dane? What's up, Ardub? Hey, right, what's up, everyone? Happy to we be here. We got the Huntsman. We got Bad Anthony. We got William Wallace. All right. Hey guys, awesome. how are we? <laughs> How's it going? That's going, hey. man. <laughs> uh, it's been a, I bet it's been a crazy morning for you guys. You guys, what, three exchanges today? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> you know, uh, under promise, over deliver, man. <laughs> oh yeah, no, hundred percent, like. <laughs> Waking up to get, getting on three exchanges is pretty wild for anybody. Like, ooh. Oh, uh, we ain't done yet. <laughs> We're definitely not done yet. The There's week, a lot of fun. The, the weekend's not even over with. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is, is R-Dub good? Can he speak? Are you there, R-Dub? Hello. Yeah, sorry. Hey, Joe. How are you, man? Sorry, I've just woken up like literally probably three minutes ago, so I'm just getting into gear. Yeah, it's like <laughs> 5 a.m. over there where he's at, so, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah. How are you, Joe? Thanks for having us. Good. Thanks for coming. All, you know, all you guys, thank you. I appreciate all you guys coming on here, you know. It's it, it's it's definitely it's definitely been a run, uh, you know, I bet from everything from your perspective of just seeing how fast everything's growing because – I started looking around what, a week, week and a half, I believe, and the growth has been pretty crazy. Um, it, it's, it's been wild. And from your guys' end, I bet it's been even crazier seeing how it is on Telegram, uh, Twitter, uh, even YouTube. It, it's starting to spread like wildfire. And these things like this, I mean, it only gets crazy before it gets calmer from, you know, from, from what I've seen in the past projects. And this one, it's even more uh, due to things like, you know, what's happening today with getting listed on three exchanges and all this other stuff happening. So uh, I was wondering if you guys could talk a little bit about yourself. Let me know uh, some stuff about yourself. Let everybody else know what's going on, you know, about yourself and how you got involved in anything <clears> like that. Okay, yeah, I'll go ahead and start it off. So what's up, everybody? I'm Shiptoshi. I'm the owner of Squid Grow. Uh, I've been in the crypto space since 2011. Uh, my first crypto investment was Bitcoin. Uh, I got into it for the purpose of uh, private poker rooms. Um, I had a group of buddies that, um, we'd play poker online and uh, Bitcoin was the currency. Um, you know, the cu whole cryptocurrency thing kind of intrigued me early on. And then that I, the fact that I had some friends that were actually into it and telling me that they were actually able to convert Bitcoin to fiat currency and spend it in real life, like definitely intrigued me a lot. So that's kind of when I went down the rabbit hole with that. You know, over the course of the next couple of years, you know, I, I've invested in various, you know, cryptocurrencies, some some for a win, some for a loss. Um, but uh, I knew early on Bitcoin was going to go somewhere. So as uh, the Huntsman has attested to before, um, set it, it was seven years before I pulled any major uh, profit out of Bitcoin. Um, you know, I just I saw where it was going and. Um, you know, didn't want to uh, shortchange myself. Essentially, you know, I'm. I'm uh, it's easier to hold for me than, um, you know, than to sell. You know, and, and honestly, uh, I've ridden many projects to the top and all the way back down to the ground. Um, it's just kind of the mentality that I have. But um, you know, I'm sure people want to hear about the Shiba Inu story. So essentially. Um, how I stumbled across Shiba was I had a, a good buddy of mine that was in the stock market and there was one day in particular that he was talking about his uh, stock gains, gains for the year. He was bragging about 30% gains and I was kind of laughing at him, you know, telling him my portfolio swing that way, you know, on a daily basis. And um, I think it really sparked something within him. So him and his friends started you know, looking into the cryptocurrency space and it was August 1st. Um, he started hitting me up. He actually was calling me and talking about the Shiba Inu coin. Uh, it's the Dogecoin killer. It's going to be this, it's going to be that. And, uh, I'd never invested in Dogecoin, uh, for my own personal reasons. 
Um, so when the, when Cheb was, you know, saying they're the Dogecoin killer, um, I wasn't entirely drawn to it, but, uh, my buddy was pretty adamant and persistent about it. So I decided I was going to jump into it. There was seven of my friends that were involved in it. And, uh, I thought it'd be hilarious if I bought more Sheb than all of them together. And that's over the next couple of days. Uh, that's exactly what I did. And, um, you know, I mean, it, it was just a long-term hold for me. The The strength of the community and how the community was forming, um, you know, I saw a potential for a, a big rally, you know, and uh, that's exactly what happened with SHIB. Um, SHIB was one of those things that when I first got into it, you know, obviously I was upside down pretty immediately. And uh, over the next couple of months, you know, it started to grow in, in size and, you um, some of my original buddies that had got into it, you know, they started peeling profit almost immediately. Some of them dumped, um, which is obviously a big regret to them to this day. But um, there's a couple of us that still hold um, shed bags. And uh, one of my buddies hasn't sold at all. Another one, my, one of my buddies is responsible for the first big dip in Shiba Inu. And, um, you know, I, against my uh, advice, uh, he decided to, to start ripping profit the way that he did and um it didn't hurt the chart much you know long term but uh kind of fast forward um my buddy the huntsman and some other friends you know obviously i get my friends into the crypto i was talking to the huntsman about bitcoin back in 2011 trying to convince him to to buy it all the way up to i believe kind of 2015 and, um, you know, so needless to say, you know, I try to get my friends into, you know, the, the same type of things that interest me. And, um, you know, the Huntsman and I, we jumped into a project and uh, he was, if I remember correctly, he was just starting to get into crypto kind of heavy. And we jumped into this project and it turned into um, who has a bigger bag type of thing. You know, I'd wake up one morning and he, he would uh, he bought more than me you know, overnight. So he was now wallet one, I was wallet two. So then I'd buy more than him. We kind of went back and forth for a couple of days, eventually leading up to the, the team rugging the project, which, which sucked. And I felt really bad for him and one of my other friends that I dragged into it because, you know, they lost their money. And, um, you know, essentially, you know, um, trying to convince your friends to buy a project that doesn't turn out the way that you think it is, you, you somewhat feel responsible for that, you know, their loss of money. And uh, over the period of the time with the, uh, the change in the space and, you know, how all these other projects started popping up where they pump to like a hundred grand market cap and then the dev team rugs and doesn't really give the community much of a chance, you know, especially when there's strong potential for the project with the strength of the community that's growing and, and the dev team just decides to shortchange it and steal everybody's money. Um, I started thinking about launching my own project um, all, Although I've always been an investor and I'm, I'm not a dev and I don't pretend to be, um, you know, I started looking into, you know, launching my own, co my own contract. So I found a contract coder on Code Mentor. He was one of the highest ranking coders there. And um, I had him code a series of contracts for me, um, you know, with various names. Um, I never ended up launching any of them with the exception of Squid Grow. But, um, you know, it was just kind of playing around with the names of them. Obviously, I wanted to do a meme coin. I was originally going to launch on the Ethereum chain, which is, you know, where I'm a whale at. And um, kind of put it on the back burner. In November, I had Igor, is his name, code a contract for me for Squid Grow. Um, you know, essentially following the hype of Squid Games. And uh, while I was trying to figure out how to deploy the contract and take in a Solidity class as well to try to learn how to make changes to the contract on my own, Squid Games came out, the scam token, and, uh, you know, kind of just took over the space. Um, we all know the story with that. So because I was late to the party with the Squid project, I put it on the shelf and just continued, you know, about my life you know, doing my investments and, and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, in the crypto space, the scam, the scamming that was going on kind of got, you know, more common. And uh, eventually I ended up in a private whale room with Ardub 
and, uh, you know, got to talking to him on a more personal level. And, uh, you know, we both shared the same views and concerns in the space. And it was around this time that I talked to him about my ambitions about launching a project with the goal to, to give people, you know, a safe place to invest their money. Obviously, at the time, uh, it was more geared towards, you know, people that I know directly, you know, giving my friends and my family a safe place to, to put their money so they wouldn't have to worry about, you know, scams. And, um, you know, we decided to, to drop a drop a squid grow you know i essentially was telling our dub about the different project names that you know i have contracts for and we decided to rock squid grow and um you know we decided to, to just do a stealth launch with it you know no private sale no pre-sale so uh the story actually on that those of you that don't know we actually uh, launched our contract on june 17th but there was actually an issue within the contract code it had uh, the, the it had the uh, Uniswap pancake router info in there as well as the uh, pancake, and um, uh, almost immediately um, we started hearing people were having issues selling. So after we looked into it and discovered the issue, we had to announce in our Telegram group we were going to uh, disable trading, so nobody else could additionally buy. And uh, we relaunched within 24 hours, airdropped all of our holders, uh, one for one tokens. Um, transferred to liquidity and activated trading and we hit the ground running you know and our first day I believe we got up to 400k market cap from a starting cap of about 30k um, so that's that's essentially how squid grow you know came into existence you know it was all about just uh, originally you know giving friends and family a safe place to invest their money and obviously it's evolved into what it is today you know given the community and the small investors and given all investors a safe place to, to, to invest their money where they don't have to worry about anything malicious from the dev team. You know, those of you that uh, you don't know, liquidity is locked for a year. Um, the contract is not renounced, but um, contracts, we have not renounced contract. Obviously, we've announced we're coming out with the bridge. So we need access to the contract, but also for exchanges, you know, um, we run a tax on squid grow it's eight percent by eight percent sell all going to liquidity and uh to get listed on these bigger exchanges you have to whitelist their addresses and if you don't have access to the contract um that's just one of the drawbacks you know uh you, you essentially can't list on exchanges if you don't have access to the contract so by renouncing it it would essentially kill any ambitions that we have to you know take this all the way up to the top So with that being said, Squid Grow Joe, you know, I'm kind of long winded at times, especially when I get going. Um, I'm going to pass it off to Arda. Yeah. And uh, if we have any additional questions for me, we can we can come back. Thanks, Shib. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that was well said. Uh, I will keep it relatively short this morning. Uh, it's very early for me here in Australia. But um, yeah, I'm Arda. I originally uh, got into the crypto space in 2011. At that time, I had bought some Bitcoin um, and obviously nowhere near as much as Shibtoshi at that time, uh, but definitely got it pretty cheap and I actually still hold um, some of my original Bitcoin there. But um, yeah, over the next uh, many years, I kind of traded top 200 coins on and off until I landed in the BSC space approximately 18 months ago now. Uh, when I originally came into the BSC, I had no idea anything about the space at that time, anything about DeFi really. Um, so like everyone else here, I kind of learned the hard way as well. Um, you know, went through all those experiences of, of honeypots and rug pulls and, you know, being told by devs that, you know, you've got a you've got a diamond hand these tokens and then they, they stop trading and you wonder what's going on and you've got no money left and all those sorts of things. Um, but, you know, after some time, I slowly worked out what was happening and, um, you know, you get into gear and, um, after some time, I started uh, calling projects for an elite whale group um, and did that for a couple of months, I guess. Uh, that was a really good experience for me, actually. I started making some good connections and meeting some really cool people. Um, 
it wasn't through that, but it was through another project that I was just an investor in um, that I happened to be brought into the private whale group that Shibtoshi spoke about earlier on, uh, which is where we happened to meet each other. I have no idea why or how the stars aligned and that happened, but someone pointed it out to me the other day when I was telling them the story of, of Squid Grow. Um, and, you know, it actually hits me now. It's It actually is pretty crazy when I think about it that somehow, you know, things came together and I happened to meet this person that was, um, you know, the person we've all come to know today as Shiptoshi, um, the guy who invested $8,000 into Shiba and and uh, became a billionaire himself. But it was, um, yeah, through that that we uh, started talking. Obviously, when we first met, I didn't know exactly who he was at all. Um, you know, we were just two people talking on Telegram, really, and realized that we had the same intentions and ideas around crypto um but yeah after after a couple of months obviously we trusted each other and um you know shibtoshi ended up telling me who he was which was you know just absolutely blew my mind at the time um but yeah through that um i guess as shibtoshi just explained to you you know we um he already had some contracts made up and, and we thought it would be a good idea to, to launch Squid Grow. So um, that's that's leads us to where we are today. Um, I'll pass it on to Dane so he can introduce himself as well. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having us today. Hey, guys. Yeah, thanks a lot for hosting us, man. I'm, I'm actually I was looking forward to this one all week. So I'll keep it brief as well. Um, I've been in crypto since 2016. I have a uh, background in a couple different things. One of them was cybersecurity. So I was always interested in crypto. I just never actually forged into it to 2016 because the, the let's say the investments weren't there from my end as far as the capital I was generating. So once I did get into it, though, I was I was in love. Uh, and I was one of the people who have stayed obsessed with it since 2016. Um, and I got burned in 2017, 2018 as I went crazy with it because I didn't know any better. Um, and then when I did that, I learned technical analysis. And, uh, and I fell in love with DeFi very early on in, in uh, actually 2018 when Ethereum was kind of all on the back end of Solidity and there was no pretty wallets or dApps or anything front end like that. So, you know, that was kind of where it started. 2020, it got more serious. Um, at that point, I was looking for DeFi projects ahead of time before they came onto the bigger exchanges like KuCoin. And that's what sort of piqued my interest about DeFi was the fact, hey, I could find these projects really early before they go into an exchange and go crazy. And that's where that started. That's where it all started for me. Uh, I started getting involved with projects more hands-on, starting with Hokkaido Inu and uh, Kishu Inu right around there. Uh, time passed on, started my own rewards token, was pretty much the first successful one in the BSC space called HODL token. And we went on to Floki with my marketing team to help them rise to their big market cap like everybody knows. Um, more recently created CatCoin, and now I'm very happy to be part of Squid Grow. And my background also in marketing uh, you know, I, I do a lot of project management, project leadership, public speaking, um, all sorts of fun stuff like that. And I'm also part of a team called Blockchain Brothers, which I believe are some of the most well-connected individuals in the DeFi sector. And, you know, we're able to open our doors. Uh, I always tell Shibtoshi, I'm like the grocery store. I'm going to present to you anything you want for the lowest possible price whenever you want it. You just come and shop and take what you want and we'll move from there. And I sort of, you know, I've kind of outlined the pros and cons given what's good, what's bad. And, uh, you know, we sort of formulate a plan on a day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week basis that we can run with and, and keep this machine moving. So from a marketing standpoint, you know, I'm very happy to provide value however we can, as well as, you know, the cool the cool part from my perspective is kind of being the win marketing guy. Um, the amount of messages and DMs I get, you know, most of them are pretty bad, but there are a lot of diamonds in the rough that emerge from Telegram that have hit me up that have amazing connections. So, you know, being in the marketing limelight with a project as, as awesome as this, you know, it just it just grows and it grows and it grows because there's so much talent out there that gets added to the team one by one. So that's a bit about me. And I think that's enough. So let's maybe let's move on from intros and get just a little bit more grindy details of the project and whatnot. Yeah. So thank you for the introduction, by the way, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm, I've been pumped nonstop about this AMA. Uh, just to have you guys talk to everybody because you guys always... 
give a lot of great information and any questions uh, that people have, we're going to say it's at the end of this AMA in case anyone wants to ask any questions because I know the community has asked a bunch of questions. I, I, I tweeted out the other day if anyone has questions and some of you will actually hit me with some of them. Uh, one of them was, uh, why did you guys choose a Squid Girl name? Um, and w- what do you say to like a holder who thinks there's any, there could be any like anything negative with the Squid Game uh, Netflix show? And is there anything like legal uh, that you guys worry about as far as that? <clears throat> okay, so um, I think each of us will kind of touch base on that, but I'll, I'll lead with it. So, um, as I said, in November of 21, I, uh, I came up with the name for Squid Grow. Um, it was it was around the time that Squid Game's TV series on Netflix was kind of taken over. And uh, when you're looking for, you know, a meme project, obviously I've made a lot of money in, in meme coins. I'm a, a very strong believer in them. Uh, you're looking for something that, you know, has hype and something that's memeable. Um, obviously, um, I wasn't going to come out with a project and call it Squid Games. Um, there's intellectual property rights associated with that name. So I didn't want to run into uh, any legal issues with, with the name per se. Uh, you know, so we threw Squid in there, or I threw Squid in there, and then, you know, grow. You know, um, the ability to, to continue to grow and move up and, um, you know, was kind of why I threw the grow in there. Um, at the time, uh, there were some other projects that were kind of doing well. So um, I kind of jumped on that, that train, if I'm being honest with you. You know, I took, uh, you know, two big positives, in my opinion, which was Squid Games. You know, it was all the rage, you know, um, top stream TV show on Netflix, really huge. Everybody was aware of it and grow, you know, grow has a a couple of different meanings. As I said, um, you know, uh, the name itself, you know, implies growth. Um, and also, um, I obviously wasn't the first one to come out with a grow coin. Um, but the grow coin at the time, was doing quite well. So I took two positives and made it into one. Um, That's how I came up with the name Squid Grow. Well said, Shiptoshi. Um, Look, in terms of the name, like I think you've covered it pretty well, Shiptoshi. Um, As as, uh, Shib said earlier on, uh, I actually didn't come up with the name or have anything to do with the name myself like the contract and and all those types of things were already coded quite earlier on but coming back to your question joe um i think you asked something about like the legal ramifications of um the netflix series uh squid game so uh obviously you have to be very careful when launching like a business or a company or a token if it has any kind of similarities to something that is already existing and and quite quite big in the world and obviously we know that squid game is massive it's one of the biggest tv shows uh it's the biggest tv show ever in south korea if i if i'm not wrong um so yes we have had to be quite careful with those things but if you take a look at um you know even our website and our logos and all of those types of things um we've been very selective about how we've chosen how we've um you know uh, delivered those things um, so that they are not too similar to the actual TV series or um, Netflix itself. Um, and in doing that, we believe that we um, have done it in such a way that we won't be able, we won't want, run into any legal issues. Dane, do you want to touch on that as well? I mean, I think you guys have covered it pretty much. You just have to skate around. Um, using certain content because that can get you in trouble. And I think I think we've done a good job of that and as well. We have a very strong legal team in the background that's working with us as we get bigger so that uh, all, all those risk areas are covered. <coughs> all right, excellent. Um, another question uh, that was asked is, on CoinMarketCap, it says something about the smart contract uh, being modified. Uh, there's like a big red thing on top of and when you go to CoinMarketCap for Squid Grow. Uh, can you guys talk about uh, what's going on with that, or is there a way to fix that, or anything about that? Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll speak on that if you want me to. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Dane. So it's a so the CMC and the CG warning. It displays both of them, and what that is is actually a generic warning. 
that goes on to pretty much every contract in DeFi that isn't renounced. Um, it doesn't, they don't look into the audits. They don't look at anything. They just put that on there as a warning message to say that the dev can, can change tax, can, can do basic functions. Essentially it's, it's actually, I think it's silly that they put that on there personally. They started doing it. I want to say about two to three months ago for every project. And so since then you've seen a lot of projects announcing their contract just to avoid that oftentimes at their own peril, because when you are a young project with plans to do things like a bridge or, you know, you wanted to have some of those functions in tax as you're, as you're running contests, for instance, with tax, you know, that's that's something that you don't want to give up. And so it's unfortunate and CMC started doing that. However, with that said, we, we do have some pretty ghost contacts with CMC. And I think once they take a look at our audit in a bit more detail, you will see that message uh, be removed in the short term, not so distant future. Yeah. It's actually something, I guess it can be quite frustrating. Like it's something that definitely as a team member, we receive countless DMs about. But, um, you know, as Dane said, it is something that is automatic with CMC at the moment with new tokens uh, that are not renounced. But if you actually look at what the warning says, it talks about, um, you know, um, the smart contract, for example, can disable selling, change fees, mint new tokens or transfer tokens. And when you actually look deeper into our contract, uh, the only part that, um, you know, exists on our contract is the is the part that we can change taxes, which, as Dane said, um, you know, is something that can be useful for us if we're, if we're running big buy contests and stuff like that. Um, so it can be, you know, a little bit scary for new investors seeing that, and we definitely understand that. Uh, but it is something that we have looked into. And as Dane said, you know, uh, through con. Uh, contacts at CMC. Uh, hopefully, it's something that we we will be able to get rid of as well. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. Um, another question was, uh, you know, Shotoshi has been paying for just about everything at this point, up until this point. Uh, is there any plans to have something added or modified? to have something within a contract. Normally, you know, they have like a percentage that goes to marketing and such as that. Um, Is there anything in the contract that will take everything from here on in? Or will it still be a mixture? Or what's the future plans for that? Um, Actually, uh, my whales have suggested that I I, uh, change tax, um, you know, to fund something to the marketing wallet. Um, so we, we announced that, um, we did make the change a while back and I, we, we went with that for several days, but, uh, I overall didn't see a need to, to have to, um, you know, take tax to pay for marketing, you know, as you know, when I set out, um, I set aside a, a certain amount of money that to pay for my marketing and, um, you know, uh, spread the awareness of my project. So we did change it back to 100% going to liquidity. Um, obviously, I want to thicken up my liquidity pool as best I can. You know, um, there's a lot of potentials to that. Uh, you know, exchanges love that. Uh, whales love that, you know. Um, and overall, community likes a thick liquidity. And if you look at some of the bigger projects without putting out names, you know, they shoot into the uh, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars of market cap with a liquidity ratio to a market cap of around 1%. And the second that people start selling, you know, they're back into the, you know, into the double digit millions, you know, from the triple digits. So um, for the time being, I don't see a need to to have to uh, have any of the tax go into a marketing wallet. I'm not going to say that there might not come a time where, uh, we might have a percentage going to the marketing wallet, but for the time being, um, I'm perfectly content paying for everything out of pocket. I mean, that's, that's what I set out to do. Awesome. Um, another question, someone that was brought up, I think it was brought up on Twitter, like last week, someone said that there was a movement within the deployer, uh, that it was, that liquidity was removed and put back and, they, they, they were trying to allude, but they didn't say anything directly, but they were alluding to some some nefarious actions. Uh, and then they, then after a while, they came back and said, oh, no, everything was put back. Uh, can you explain about the movement within that wallet? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and touch that touch on that and then let Dane as well, um, because that was a movement that I made. So first of all, uh, we offer liquidity staking. So 
uh, with liquidity staking, any of our investors are able to add to our liquidity pool. And if those investors decide to remove their liquidity from the pool, it comes out of the look. It, it shows on the contract that they are removing liquidity. Um, so there is that. But uh, in regards to what I think uh, the FUD was about, because I actually addressed it on the tweet, um, our cake LP um uh, staking earns, uh, or excuse me, our liquidity staking earns cake LP. And that cake LP uh, goes to the deployer wallet. And uh, the, the cake LP is different from the locked liquidity. The, as I said, our liquidity is locked for a year. But the cake LP uh, is essentially unlocked liquidity. And there's a couple of different things that you can do with that. You can burn it, you can add it to the liquidity locker, which I've done numerous times. Or you can uh, initiate a buyback on the chart with it. So on the in the particular movement that you were talking about, um, the cake LP that was in there, uh, there was about uh, I want to say three hundred thousand dollars in cake LP sitting in the deploy wallet. I used one hundred and thirteen thousand of the cake LP to do a buyback on the chart after uh, discussing with some of my investors, and uh, I pumped the chart one hundred and thirteen grand. Uh, we met a new all time high, which was quickly. Um, you know, sold down on, but, um, it went to the chart. Everything's on chain. Uh, nothing was transferred out to like personal wallets. Um, the tokens that were purchased, uh, go towards, uh, our uh, staking pools for our investors. So all in all, it's uh, a benefit in my opinion to the investors. It allows us to accumulate, um, Additional tokens to feed our high APYs that we offer on our coin staking and LP staking. And, you know, it, it, it pumps the community, you know, uh, a buyback like that. And uh, that actual buyback, which was uh, actually a little short, short t- changed, it was a $99,000 buyback, uh, followed up by a $13,000 buyback. Uh, you know, that buyback kind of went viral, you know, it was circulating all over the Internet. But um, everything was on chain. Nothing was transferred to a private wallet. Um, everything was done for the community. Um, I, I do know that I, there was some blowback on that. Some people didn't like it. The community loved it, but, uh, the investors or people that are not involved in the project definitely had an opinion about it. Um, so with that being said, I'll let Dane go ahead and, uh, step in at that point. You explained, you explained it perfectly, Satoshi. So nothing really to add there. The, the only caveat is everybody likes to be a blockchain expert, right? Like everybody likes to go into BSC scan and do a little conspiracy theory detective work every now and then, myself included. And uh, when you do that, uh, if you don't have the information that was just presented, it looks like they're pulling liquidity from perhaps the locked liquidity locker. And that's, I think, what scared people is they're like, oh my gosh, you know, the project can remove liquidity from the, and it's supposed to be locked, you know, so that, that they, they panic and think that we're withdrawing liquidity or at least we have the availability to. And oftentimes they see that alarm bells go off. They don't even look to see that it was all put right back into the project. With that said, we want to prioritize strengthen the liquidity pool. That is number one priority for us, in fact, and we're looking at ways to, to do that as time passes beyond just tax. So that is important to point out that we are aware that we, we could add more and we can figure out ways to do that. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was perhaps not the best move from a perspective of a new outside investor looking at that on chain. But when you see what it actually did for the chart, I think it was very well received. However, with that said, we'll, we'll make sure that we calculate any moves like that in the future, um, you know, with, with a lot of uh, advice before we move forward with anything like that again. Another question you guys probably get a lot is like, are there any more planned utilities uh, for this project? Oh, Joe, come on with our conversations. You know our stance on that. Come on, man. Uh, so the only uh, future utility that we have announced, and we only announced it because I, I genuinely wanted the feedback of the community, is our Ethereum bridge. Um, so I, I definitely wanted... Um, to hear what the community had to, to say about that and if anybody had any suggestions on a way to do it better. Um, so we got some advice and, uh, you know, I researched them and talked to different different projects that I felt might be able to help us in some way, shape, or form. At the end of the day, um, you know, I decided that when, when the bridge 
launches, the bridge is done. Um, essentially, what we're waiting on right now is Ethereum 2 to come out. Everybody knows, you know, it's coming. It's not like a whole new Ethereum, but they, they are definitely evolving in some ways. But uh, in my personal opinion, I, I think uh, Ethereum price might come down a little bit. And I don't want to have my project attached to that if there's a major sell off. You know, I um, know some some pretty heavy Ethereum whales and uh, I know their plans. And uh, as I said, I, I don't want to be attached to the ethereum chain if uh, the price is going to dip substantially so with that said we are kind of just waiting for the ethereum 2 to come out see what happens with that if there's a sell-off we'll wait for the dust to settle on that if there's not then you know we'll probably go ahead and go live with it but with that being said joe as you know um you know we under promise over deliver so the things that we are working on in the back end uh we don't really share with the community um, you know, kind of <clears throat> the exception to that was the bridge, <clears throat> excuse me, was the bridge. And then the other night <clears throat> we had a whale uh, dump on us. So we all hopped on VC and essentially told the community our exchange plans, which we had already been working on for, for some weeks at that point. And uh, those are coming to light as y'all can all see. But yes, Joe, definitely working on things on the back end. But, uh, you know, we uh, we're, we're not going to share that with the community, you know, um, in case there's unforeseen uh, hang ups or, or issues that we run into. Um, you know, we don't want to let any of our investors down. Me personally, as an investor, when I'm invested in a project, one of my biggest pet peeves is when the dev team says <clears throat> they're working on X, Y and Z and they cause all this hype and all this FOMO around these utilities that either become extremely delayed or don't come about at all. And, uh, you know, as I've stated before, I'm running the project through the eyes of an investor. What is it that I'm looking for as an investor? Um, and so that's kind of the stance we have when it comes to utilities and our future plans. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I try to slip that one in. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take some questions from anybody. Uh, we have some people already requesting, um, the only thing I ask is just come up, you know, do your questions and whatnot. Just don't try to, like, barrage eight questions. Just kind of, like, do one, and then we'll try to get as many people as we can up here. And then afterwards, uh, maybe we'll have some guys come up. Like, we, I see we have Bad Anthony. We have the Huntsman. So we got some other fellas in here. Have them come up, and uh, we can have them talk and whatnot. Uh, so we're going to take some um, people up here in one second. Yeah, I'd, I'd love for you to uh, unmute Bad Anthony, uh, the Huntsman, William Wallace, if possible. Uh, I've actually not pulled William up on any of my AMAs, uh, mad respect for him. I actually sought him out, um, directly to bring him on to, to my mod team. And, uh, he has not, uh, disappointed. Yeah. William Wallace has been amazing. That guy, he raids 24. I don't know how he sleeps. He reads 24 seven. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, mad. It, you know, kind of funny. So, you know, his default is obviously Braveheart. And then he's been in many, many projects that, I, that I've been in. So the first time I actually spoke to him, you know, I was kind of laughing because, uh, you know, you kind of associate, you know, um, you know, the person you're talking to on Telegram kind of with their picture. And, uh, you know, I was kind of expecting Mel Gibson. <laughs> Hope he has like a big, hard, like Scottish accent. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So we have uh, uh, Dizzle. Dizzle, you there? Hey, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, buddy. All right, good. Um, I'm going to try to be sensitive to everybody's time. Um, I just want to say I love this team. I love this community that we're building, right? I joined on um, July 31st is when I brought my first bag of uh, Squid Row. So, yeah, um, I have many questions, but to be sensitive to everybody's time, um, I was wondering, can I ask two? Is that all right, Joe? Can yeah. I ask two? All right. Yeah, all right, sure. Cool. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, um, my first question is um, we have uh, uh, a huge supply of uh, squid grow, $610 trillion. I was wondering, is there any – plans to like remove any of these from circulation or is that going to be the 
amount that we're going to have going forward. I think you're actually referring to our circulating supply. Um, yes. Total, total supply is uh, one quadrillion. Yes. To answer your Certainly. question, um, currently we do not have any plans to do any burns. Um, you know, um, in the long end, you know, it, it it helps the price a little bit, but everybody seems to think if you do a, a token burn, it pumps the price. But in reality, it actually doesn't do anything for the chart. And at the stage that we're in right now, that um you know we are trying to achieve the goals and ambitions that we have um you know those tokens are definitely needed for things like liquidity pool um staking coin staking exchange listings things of that sort um so you know if we start actually doing burns it could uh limit you know um the apys that we can offer the community in the long term you know, um, if we start if we start burning down supply, the other thing too with burning is that we we've, we've run a bunch of numbers on what we have available to burn and what impact it would actually have, and it was something we've explored pretty thoroughly. With that said, because we deep we deep dive the numbers on what it would do to the liquidity ratio and all those good things, and unfortunately, the impact is very negligible. Even if we were to burn pretty much our entire treasury side you're only looking at a very small increase in liquidity pool ratio to market cap. Um, and then that leaves us with just less flexibility, as Satoshi said, for the uh, for the things that we have coming that we need those tokens for. Yeah, we were actually talking about burning the remainder of my uh, team allocation uh, the other night, and we ran numbers, and it, it would not help the liquidity pool very much at all. But it was something that I was willing to do. But... Um, you know, after running numbers, I think those tokens could be get better utilized to go into our staking pools or something of that nature or towards an exchange if need be, instead of just burning them out of circulation. All right. Cool, cool. Nice to hear. Nice to hear that. And that's going to direct to my next question. We, we were talking about staking. We know you guys' um, motto is to under-promise, over-deliver so with the staking thing, I know one of the AMAs you like, um, one of the pet peeves that you have is companies that um, have you lock up your staking pool for a certain amount of time, whether it's six months a year, whatever it is. And you guys, you know, the community can unlock and lock the stake whenever they want. So my question is. With the staking, it's, it's basically a two part with the staking. Is there a. Is there plans to like give more of rewards to um, holders that stake, but um, besides giving Evergrow, I mean Squid Grow, I'm sorry, besides giving Squid Grow, and um, the there's a countdown clock, there's a countdown counter on the staking um, pool, and I wanted to know what that countdown um, clock was. Thank okay, you. I'll go. Ahead, I'll go ahead and address that. So um, currently, there there's no plans to reward our stakers um and anything other than squid um i guess you might be alluding to like maybe bnb or busd rewards at this time uh we do not have plans to do that and to answer your second question the, the countdown timer so our staking pools are ran on a 30-day um clock so essentially at the end of the 30 days the staking pool ends um and we reassess our APYs that we offer. Obviously, when we first launched um, on our uh, coin staking, we offered over 200% APY. And uh, at the end of that staking period, the first 30 days, we had about 40% of total supply staked. So if I had chosen to, you know, say, offer 100% APY, within that next 12 months or 11 months, I should say, we would have to have allocated 40% of total supply to pay out in rewards, which obviously would de deplete um, a lot of tokens. Um, and uh, so that's kind of, so then I guess to answer your question, um, we run our pools on a 30 day clock and we reassess um, our APYs at the end of the 30 day period. At example, um, I believe we have, uh, about 50% of total supply stake right now. Hang on, let me just pull the numbers up so I'm giving accurate information. Um, one second. Uh, yeah, we've got 53.1% of total supply staked in our staking contracts. 
So if we were to, you know, give out 100% APY, say for the year, we'd have to give out over 50% of total supply. So with 50% already in there and giving out another 50%, that'd be 100% of the total supply. So we would have no, there'd be no tokens to, to move forward with. So um, our staking clocks kind of allow us to run a certain APY um, for 30 days and we, then we reassess our APY. So our staking pool rewards are funded with uh, with hard tokens. It's not based off of volume or anything like that. So the APYs that we are offering are the APYs that you are getting. And um, because we run them on a 30 day period, we're able to reassess um, our, our rewards at the end of the at the end of the day. So, you know, we're just kind of adjusting as need be, you know, for um, long term growth and sustainability, you know, because obviously like our, our LP staking 500 percent APY, which is what we're currently offering. That's not sustainable. And uh, most major exchanges actually won't even list us if we offer APYs that high. Um, so it allows us the ability to kind of adjust to the market. You know, if, uh, you know, we all of a sudden go from 50%, uh, total supply stake to 10% staked of total supply, then we're able to actually, you know, offer a higher APY. Um, so it, it gives us some flexibility there, but, uh, I hope, uh, Dizzy, I've, I've answered your questions. Um, you have. Um, thank you to the team. Hey, Joe, thank you for hosting this um, AMA. And, hey, Squid Grow to the Moon. Let's get it. That's thank right. You, Make sure you're suited up, man. I, mean, I am. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for the opportunity. I yeah, appreciate I appreciate it. you, brother. We also have Papa Stonks. Papa Stonks, you there, buddy? Hey, yeah, Joe, I'm here. What's up, Papa? Hey, what's going on, guys? Yeah, for the longest time, man, I, I thought Papa was the uh, blockchain expert that uh, blew the whistle on my 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 wallet holdings. But as it turned out, uh, it was another <laughs> community member. Uh, but for the longest time, I thought it was Papa. <laughs> no, no, this this time it wasn't me. Uh, somebody actually sent it to me uh, in DM on launch day. And uh, so I had to take a look, you know, and I came and I checked out the uh, checked out the telegram and, you know, I'm looking into the wallets and, you know, I confirmed it. I'm like, yeah, it, that's definitely his wallet. And. Um, Where's that? But anyway, Papa, let, let's let's hear you say a couple things, bud. Uh, I didn't mean to sorry, distract you sorry. with my statement. No, 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 no. Sorry, uh, my wife just walked in, so she was asking me questions. Um, you know, uh, yeah. So I got to know uh, I got to know Shatoshi just talking to him. Uh, you know, in VC, and you know, realized the potential that this project has with with how real he actually is you know this guy is so down to earth it's ridiculous you know i talk to him in dm all the time and you know when uh the whole liquidity issue came up um you know i was getting i was getting tagged in so many private chats about this and sent dms and everybody asking me what's going on and you know i had to explain to them like okay well first You've got a ton of whales that are staked in LP. So when somebody removes it, it's going to show. And second, you know, you can trust this project. It's, it doesn't matter what CMC says at the top of their screen. It's the person running the contract is the one that you got to worry about. And you have nothing to worry about here. This guy has no reason at all or will to to do any harm to his project or to anybody out there in this space. And that's why I'm, you know, I've been on fully backing this since day one, and I always will. Thank you for your support, Papa. Of course, brother, of course. You know, and if anybody has any questions about uh, staking or anything like that, 
Uh, my DMs are always open. You know, I spend most of my time in there. So uh, just DM me and I'll walk you through. If you have any questions about anything, just let me know. Awesome. Appreciate that. I, um, I'm trying to invite up uh, Anthony and Huntsman and hopefully William Wallace. Um, I sent them the invites, so hopefully they'll come up in a bit. Um, but listen, uh, Dane, our Dutch Josie, anything else you want to say about the, you know, about the project and everything that's happened so far? I mean, I'll okay, just say, uh, yeah, go, Dan. Okay. Um, so I'll just say that we're getting warmed up. We're just getting warmed up. You know, three exchanges and in, in a 48 hour period were just announced with, with more to come. You know, we can't control the timing of all of them entirely. So, you know, there are coming though. And, the cool thing about exchanges is sometimes you see an immediate pump for them. Sometimes you don't, but when we get on these more tier two and soon enough tier one exchanges, you, you put yourself closer to being paired with a macro and, and that is Bitcoin. And so when, when we do have a little bit of a proper market recovery, you know, up into the thirties, whether that's next spring, whether that's this year, whether that's whenever it's, it's going to be much more closely paired to that versus if you're just isolated in DeFi. And uh, oftentimes projects in DeFi will wonder why they get left behind. And that's a big part of it is they're not really on any reputable exchanges where there's organic volume. So, you know, the cool thing is there's that. And there's also the fact that we have a lot of marketing tricks up our sleeves as well as utility to come out in the future. And when that does and you're on those exchanges, the the movements that you make have a larger impact because they're they're kind of echoed across bigger market exposure. And, and that can drive the price up really easily, to be honest, when you have that. So, you know, yes, you can get pulled down with Bitcoin a bit more and you're sort of along for the ride, but also it can go the other way. And, you know, the bear, the bear market that we're in, maybe it gets a little worse, maybe for a little bit. But for the most part, you know, we're, we're getting through it. And so, you know, this, this project is not just a short term marketing hype machine that's going to die off. We've got long term vision for this. It'll be around a long time from now, probably even around when the time that Squid Game series, you know, season two comes out. You can imagine as the things start ramping back up and news gets out, what people are going to be thinking about, especially if you time it with the bull market and a little bit of, um, you know, Federal Reserve calming down with the markets. So a lot of good things in the long term that I'm excited for. I just wanted to point that out. Um, this is not just something where, hey, like, oh, no, we didn't, you know, we didn't we didn't do a 2x on our three exchange launch. But, uh, you know, it's just the beginning and uh, exchanges are just a piece of the puzzle. Absolutely. It, it, it's still wild. I, I, I was mentioning a video earlier today. I was saying how most cryptos would tease at least a week for one exchange. That three come out in a day is just absolutely mind blowing um, for anybody. And it's just so cool to see it happen so soon. Uh, with this project that's still relatively young, it's absolutely awesome to see. Yeah, let's uh, not have, let's oh, yeah, not let's forget like, about let's not forget about the exchange we listed on Monday as well. Oh yeah, Decoin, you mean, or the one? Right. That... No, Decoin. Yeah, Decoin. Oh yeah. The There's so many; it's kind of hard to keep track now. <laughs> And that's another thing. When people talk about burn, when when you want to burn, just think to yourself, which exchange do you not want to list on? Coinbase, Binance, which one do you not want to be on? Because to burn tokens, that's what's going to have to happen. We won't have also, the liquidity to go on to that exchange. Exactly. And, and also, another thing, Shatoshi probably wants to touch on this a bit more. He actually made a tweet yesterday about the institutional partner that we've become with bitmart and and basically that's something that's offered in the usa only because they're based here and that basically proves that shitoshi has internally doxed with this company so you know the same is true for others like mexc which we recently announced in big one you have to do that same process and you know that's that's reassuring to investors to know that our owner and company are, are being thoroughly vetted by these exchanges that we list on to be able to be accepted there, but not only to our investors, but also to larger exchanges. Oftentimes they'll look where you're listed 
And if only you have, you know, some more sketchy exchanges, um, you know, some of the lowest tier ones, then you know, it doesn't really prove much to them. But when you get on some of the more reputable ones like we're doing, it tells them, okay, these guys, A, have money, B, they're willing to KYC. And, uh, you know, with those two things said, maybe they're serious. Maybe we'll explore them a bit further. So it, it's it's essentially your your key card to get onto the tier ones that everybody want, wants. And um, I don't think it'll be long till we're um, till unveiling some of those. And I'm excited for that. You know, I love exchanges. So it's, it's no, there's no secret there. So that's something we'll always be working on in the background. And whether or not we have three in three days or, um, you know, three in a month, um, it's something that we'll always be exploring. So you just got to, you know, buckle up for that ride alone, let alone some of the secrets that uh, Shibtoshi has for you guys in the coming months. Yeah, so with, with that being said, first of all, guys, you know, um, some of y'all know me personally in real life that, that are on this VC. Um, others, they don't. And uh, I can understand, you know, uh, being hesitant to, to invest into a project where the, the guy that controls the contracts is not uh, doxed. Um, I have my personal reasons for that. Um, I have a, a pretty substantial uh, net worth and, um, you know, it, it's a danger, you know, uh, especially in this space. You know, people seem to have the mindset where, you know, if you're, you know, docs with your first and last name out there, you can be tracked down. And some people are naive enough to think they can, you know, run up on you and try to rub you, r- rob you for your cryptocurrency. So, so there's that, you know, I've also got to protect my friends and my family as well. With that being said, um, I have zero malicious intent with my project. Um, I mean, that's why I fully backed it um, with my own money. Obviously, these exchange listings are not cheap, uh, as well as the billboards and the marketing and the partnerships and everything else. Um, you know, what dev, uh, those of you that don't know, I've actually just this last month ran over my Binance withdrawal limit, which is a million dollars. Um, so I've pumped in a million dollars of my own personal wealth to, to grow this project to where we are at currently. And, uh, as currently as we sit right now, our liquidity is about a million dollars. Uh, but for a, a very long period of time, I had, um, financially backed this project with way more money than we even had in liquidity at any given time. And so with that being said, although I'm not publicly doxxed, I'm institutionally doxxed with these exchanges, Bitmark being one of them and Bitmark is regulated in the U S which is where I am a citizen. And you best believe that, um, you know, if anything went sideways, uh, Bitmark would not he- hesitate to, to give up my uh, my KYC institutional um, to, to the government. I mean, I provided bank statements. I provided uh, utility bills, phone bills, uh, government IDs. I mean, I'm fully in- um, I'm institutionally doxxed. So that's uh, a little more. Uh, it's a little greater than just a simple KYC where you just provide your ID, you know, it, um, you know, just touching base on the, uh, on the Bitmark listing on the institutional level. I had, I, I messed with that paperwork for about six hours, you know, um, providing documents, filling out information. I mean, it, it was not an easy task. And, uh, you know, I watched a uh, YouTuber's video uh, the other night actually last night. And, uh, that was something, you know, he had brought up the fact that, you know, I'm not, I'm not doxxed. You know, a lot of people want to see first and last name, um, you know, and, uh, he did touch base on the institutional docs with Bitmark. But in addition to that, these big exchanges, I am also institutionally doxxed with them, meaning that I provided all the same information, bank statements, government IDs, so on and so forth. Um, so although I'm not publicly doxxed, I am internally doxxed with the exchanges. And not only that, I live in a country that prosecutes uh, any kind of malicious intent when it comes to cryptocurrency. I mean, um, look at what just happened in Chicago uh, with those young kids that, uh, you know, stole two million dollars from their NFT NFT project. They were federally arrested and prosecuted. Um, So, I mean, hopefully that gives a little reassurance to to the investors. Um, It's not that I don't want to put my face out there, but it's a security uh, risk, you know, Um, you know, I like to um, continue live living my normal life, you know, and, and not have to look over my shoulder and worry about somebody tracking me down. Um, hey, and, and plus, on top of that, Shitoshi, someday when this project becomes uh, the most talked about crypto in the entire world, 
I'm going to be able to sell your information at TMZ. So. Oh, you better shut the hell up. <laughs> 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 you would never you would no never. no i wouldn't Maybe but um yeah i mean yeah guys i'm you know so i tweeted i tweeted the other day uh the liquidity lock last night the liquidity lock and the institutional verification obviously when um i was responding to bitboy i cropped out bitmark because at that time we had not an, announced the uh the exchange listing uh and then last night you know i obviously screenshotted uh, the institutional verification that I have with Bitmark. Um, and that was kind of met with some FUD saying, oh, you know, that's that could be Photoshopped, this, that, and the other. But, I mean, if anybody checks, if anybody goes onto Bitmark and applies for an institutional KYC, I mean, they can see the amount of documentation that's needed to obtain that. You know, it's not just an ID. I mean, you need, you know, to verify addresses. You have to verify uh Everything but your social security number, essentially. Um, so uh, bank statements, hey, bills. Let me, let me just say this, Shibtoshi. Everyone in the crypto space is taking a small amount of risk when it comes to investing, right? We're all, we're all here knowing that there's going to be potential risk in any project. And all you have to do is look at those influencers and look at the people who are part of this project. Every single person who is part of this project has a huge reputation to uphold and no one would put their reputation on the line for a small value of money. So that I think the biggest thing is just the, the community that is backing you. There are plenty of people I'm scrolling through this list of people in this AMA right now. And I see tons of people in here who personally know you. So it's just an added benefit to the early investors who are not worried about that kind of stuff to give them an opportunity to load up their bags because once this little CMC garbage gets removed off the top and once people realize that this, this squid token is far better than anything that's on the market today, um, it's going to catch on like wildfire and, and people are going to stop worrying about a scam and they're just going to start aping in. And by that time you, uh, you better hope that you already filled your bag as high as, as high as you can. Hey guys, what's up? The Toshi Huntsman Joe, what you guys doing? What's up, Ray? How's it going, man? Good, good. You know, I don't, I don't vouch for many people, obviously, and uh, I, I've met you, I know you, and you know, I, I have no problem saying without, you know, any doubt in my mind, uh, you know, this is obviously a real project. You know, you guys are working hard, so keep that up. You know, everyone's jumping on, and they're worried about the name. Uh, you know, from bullshit past projects, but, you know, this is the real deal. They wouldn't be going on all these exchanges. They wouldn't be grinding. Um, you know, they wouldn't be even having the AMA right now, you know, speaking facts. So I just wanted to throw that out to pretty guys. And, and Satoshi, you know, good guy, great guy, nothing bad to say about him at all. So, uh, you know, cheers to you. And uh, Huntsman, uh, you know, keep working out, big guy. <laughs> you know it, you know it. Oh, there's there's bad I Anthony. Keep I see him up there. Safe. Yeah, right? I'm going to start calling him Pauly D, though. Anthony, bad Anthony looks like Pauly D a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. That's, so, that's funny. Hey, what's hey, up? That, might, that might, might be a compliment, though. Yeah, right? <laughs> nah, <laughs> he, nah, he, I don't want Bad that. Anthony definitely rocks a better hairstyle, though, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was a little oh, jealous man. when I met him. I can't, I can't pull that look off, so, you know, props to you on that one. <laughs> hey, I know. And I'm 40 years old. I'm probably older than you. 40? Jesus Christ. I didn't think that yeah. old. Yeah, you're old. You got me by three years. <laughs> I don't want to be 40. Full head of hair. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then some. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there for you guys. But, yeah, keep up the great work. Awesome job, guys. Hey, thanks, Ray. I appreciate no it, buddy. At least you can call yeah, guys, me by I'm your real friend. name. <laughs> well, you know, you are. Holly D. You Holly are D. dogs, so yeah, you know, Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> I like money maker better. I'm gonna have to bring that back out of the woodwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, I'm just I'm impressed by uh, the team. Pretty much, how well spoken you guys are. Like, I just got into crypto uh, in 2019, so. 
I don't really know all the ins and outs of everything. So I don't know. I don't really do technical analysis, but I do fundamental analysis on projects. And it's pretty much, I look into the team. I look how they speak in the AMAs and, uh, you know, I look at their, their background and their history and you guys just have it. You guys all have it. Uh, Shiptoshi, I know personally. Dane, I haven't met yet. Um, the Huntsman's a beast. Uh, Air Dub, you guys are just all real knowledgeable. And um, it's easy to get behind a project uh, when, you know, you see this. And so, uh, you know, it's easy, man. It's The community is crazy. Retweeting, every, everybody's retweeting each other. Everybody's supporting each other. Um, it's just bringing more awareness to just giving confidence to other investors trying to get in this project. But yeah, guys, um, it's I'm an, it's an honor to to even be up here and talking. Uh, thanks, Squid Grow Joe, for uh, hosting this space. Um, yeah, man, you guys are all great. Yeah, I appreciate that, brother. And you know, thanks to every everyone here today. Like seriously, like it it's been really cool to sit here and just talk and hear from, you know, the team, everybody else about this project. And like I said, my personal experience, I came to this project hesitant and after just hearing the AMAs and hearing everyone talk, these people are here for every holder and, and you know, whether you're a huge whale or you're someone that only got a couple of bucks in baby and just want to get involved in something. But you don't want to, you know, you you have that cautious, uh, cautious about you. This is definitely that to me. This is definitely that project. Uh, hundred thousand percent. This is such a really really cool time to get in the project, especially this one that's growing. And as time goes on, you know, uh, you know, Dane talked talk about before, but it just it, it's going to get to the point where it's going to be everywhere. And everyone's going to have fun when everyone's going to want to get involved. And if you get, you know, those who got in early or those who are debating on it, I mean, this is the kind of project that definitely creates that you know right now is it's, it's almost the calm before the storm I, I guess is the best way to put it so it's a really cool time to be in but uh listen is uh i see we have rob, rob sn rob you there buddy i know he said he wanted to talk before hello Well, while we're waiting on Rob, let me just say something real quick. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that CMC has to put warnings like that stuff up at the top of the screen. But, you know, it just goes to show how little people know about the crypto space and why those warnings are put up there. Um, and they don't understand them. You know, from all the DMs and all the screenshots that people post about it, it really shows why they put that up there. Um, and as far as uh, photoshopping, you know, Bitmark application, you can photoshop that all you want, but you cannot photoshop the actual listing. So when you're when you're actually listed, that shows that that KYC was done. So you know, I don't get where people would think that uh, that could be faked. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, uh, when you list when you list on an exchange like that, you have to do an institutional KYC. I mean, it's, there, there's no way around it. So, I mean, that's just another another fact as well. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. And you know, as far as not releasing, um, you know, future utilities coming up, it, it's the it's the under promise and over deliver. And Joe, you should know all about that. Um, from another project that uh, that overpromised and underdelivered. So you know that's that's the uh, that's the issue. Nobody wants that here, and nobody wants to be involved in a project like that. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that other project uh, did those sort of things, but you know, it's a learning lesson for all the others coming in the future. This is how things should be done. 
Absolutely. Yeah, no, trust me. I, man, at this point, I could write a book about literally titled on the promise and the, you know, on the, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, it, it's kind of crazy what's, what's happening with other projects. And it's not just even one, it's just so many other ones, but definitely one big one in particular. But yeah, no, th- th- these guys, I mean, on this team, it, it's, they say they're going to do something and it's, I mean, boom, it's happening. You know, it, it, it's constant. And that's something that's a huge breath of fresh air is that honesty and straightforwardness that you, you see here compared to some other projects out there. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I think that's everybody. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we're going to be wrapping this, uh, the, the AMA up. Once again, I just want to say a huge thank you to Shatoshi, Dane, R-Dub, uh, Bad Anthony, uh, Huntsman, Ray, everybody. Thank you so much, everyone. Coming. Wait, William Wallace, is that you, buddy? Yo, I'm going to do my best um, American accent. Can you guys hear me? There he yeah. is. Do the Scottish one. Do we need a Scottish one? Scottish? No, I'm not going to bring out the Scottish one. I'm doing my best American accent. Hopefully it's coming out all right. <laughs> Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, he, he William Wallace is a workhorse, yeah, like, man. As, like as, I, as as I said, uh, I personally sought him out to to bring him on board, you know, and uh, he's definitely over delivered, you know. So that just goes mm-hmm. along with our motto: mm-hmm. under promise, over deliver. I mean, Will <laughs> is just a workhorse, man. <clears throat> Can you guys hear me all right? What is happening? Sorry, guys. Can, yeah, yeah, I can I can hear oh, you, bud. Okay, right on. Thanks for the kind word, Chip. Oh, my gosh, this community has just been so awesome, you know. Um, it's just the raids that we go on. Like, like, like Bad Ant, I'm not a technical person. I'm just the GIF guy on Telegram, if you guys are in there, you know. And um, so, yeah, it's just been a lot of fun. The Squid Grow- Army is growing every day. And, um, yeah, I can't wait for this thing to even get up higher into the market cap so that I can finally take a rest because I find myself waking up at 2.30 in the morning, checking the telegram to see what's going on, you know. And so hopefully I don't get fired here in the, in the next week either just because it's been – Oh, stop. I know, I'm kidding. No, but it's just been a lot of – it's just been a lot of fun. Um, just, yeah, it's good times. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm working even when I'm sleeping. The last couple of nights, my girl uh, has been telling me I've been talking in my sleep, you know, about the chart or different things. And then I'll say, well, yeah, I've got to go back to sleep while I'm sleeping. You know, I mean, our dub and I and, and Dane, we're just we're working long hours, but we're enjoying every every moment of it. But uh, even when I'm sleeping, I'm I'm working in my head, you know, on the project. You're not kidding, man. I, I hate that I have to sleep right now. I would rather just do this for 24 hours. Like I don't, I'm not even bored. I, I just stare at the telegram sometimes or like the chart when I have nothing to do in between activities. And uh, I would rather just do that than sleep, to be honest. It's such, it's such an awesome thing to be a part of. And it, it gets me the first thing I look at, I don't even check my text, my Instagram messages from the girl, you know, nothing. Like the first thing <laughs> I look at when I wake up is squid grow. And it's the last thing I think about before I close my eyes for like two hours and then go back at it again. Back like last night, we were supposed to go to bed. Like we we had spoken on the phone, and three hours later, we're both still up. <laughs> it happens every time, man. Yeah, I know it. Suns, I've been watching the suns come up every day now for the last uh, Same. month almost. Same. 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 <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to do this for twenty four. I mean, full time. You know, I think soon. Yeah, it's a privilege to work crypto full time. You know, because. Um, it, it's, if you have a passion for it, you know, and you, and you're busy enough, I think it's much better than having a passion for it and not knowing what to do, especially in a bear market. So it's a privilege and, and it's enjoyable if you really are about it. And all these guys here are for sure. And it's, it's such a cool thing to be a part of a group like that, that has that same passion for a crypto. I think we all do. And yeah, it's, it's tough to balance, you know, a nine to five or a uh, full time kids, family, uh, hats off to everybody that does that and still contributes to something like this, because we all know how, uh, it's sort of like its own little version of the matrix where you just, it's like, remember back maybe like three years ago, people would ask you, Oh, what's your screen time? What's your screen time? It's like, you know, maybe two, three, four or five hours. Now it's like, what's your non-screen time? Dude, I'm like on the toilet. I'm in the shower, listening to PA. 
I'm like, it's, it's not, it's not stop, you know? So it is, it is like its own little version of the matrix and it's important to take breaks, but I, I give my, I give my hats off to anybody that, that has the, a family and, a, and another job and is able to do this because uh, it, it's very tough to, to find a balance with the space in general. But at the same time, it's important to, to make sure you do that and enjoy life, you know, cause this is one of the things that this project will do is hopefully help improve your life. And it's important to, to kind of have that balance still and remember to take little breaks. And when you do come back to the space, you'll have more to offer for it. Definitely. You know, I just tell my wife, I do this so I don't have to work again. So <laughs> this is what I do. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. It's, it's, it's the way out of the system. You know, it, uh, we always say like the gov- the government is sort of like a, uh, a company and, and people that are working in, in typical imp- career paths are, are sort of the employees, not only for their career, but for the government. And, you know, you get, you get more money through your jobs, through raises and pay raises over time, but inflation goes up, housing prices goes up, you know, you, you're stuck in that system. And typically when you do better, your expenses go up. So you're still no farther along than you were. You just got bigger, maybe better things. But man, crypto is, is that thing that, you know, it, it really does offer a chance at fin- financial freedom to live the life that you want, to work from where you want as a nomad. You know, there's there's so many different paths you can take. And and I think that's a beautiful thing. And it's one of the most unique things about the industry. And for coins like this, uh, you can't get this from major altcoins in a short amount of time. These are much more quick, you know, much more volatile. And, and when you catch it at the right time and you're in a project so early like this, you know, there's a real chance it can it can create that financial freedom. And to me, that's what gets me excited with these projects is being able to help so many um, experience that. Because once you experience it, um, you know, you never you never forget it. Like I I've I remember the first time I made one hundred thousand um, dollars, you know, about two years ago, jumping up and down my apartment. It was, I'd never seen that much money in my life. You know, I busted my ass in various jobs, bartending, real estate. Uh, training, all sorts of stuff, and never once saw more than like a couple thousand in my bank account that I didn't have to pay out. And it was a great feeling. And then, you know, losing it, as we all have in crypto multiple times, that was a terrible feeling. But I knew when I lost it, you know, that was maybe sad for like a day. I knew that I could never go back. I could never go back to the nine to five. I was red pilled with crypto. And, and this is the only way forward. And so I think we're all in that in that sort of fight to to get to that level. And it's it's very inspiring to see someone that's attain that, like Shiptoshi and and some of his friends. And you know, it's it's so cool to see that he wants to give that to others. Because for me, that that's probably the greatest gift in life is to be able to live the life that you choose without having to do something that sucks away, you know, most of your energy and time, and 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 ability to spend time with your loved ones. I mean, what else offers you that? You know, aside from you know, maybe some organized crime or something like that, you know, or winning the lottery or going to a casino and, and, you know, throwing a couple thousand dollars on a roulette table. Like what, what else offers you that, you know? So for me, it's so cool to help people sort of achieve that dream. And I think we're going to change a lot of lives as we move this project forward. Would grow mafia in the house. That's right. Hey, uh, hey, Joe. So uh, I'm not sure if you'd like to speak or not, but I see crypto control in here um if he if he'd like to to jump on uh i'd be happy to to have him his video is actually the one that i was watching last night where he had spoken about the institutional kyc and some um he he raised some some pretty solid questions and uh although i I spoke to him uh i believe yesterday at at length um if he's willing to hop on you know i've got time Yeah, I sent him a, a, an invite. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to hop on or not. Uh, but I did send him an invite. Hopefully, he'll be able to hop on and maybe he wants to talk and whatnot. But, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of crazy things happening in crypto constantly. And this project definitely has been solid from like right off the gate, which has been such an amazing thing to see. Uh, from a, you know, Like I said, I, there was a project today that came out that already is having issues. It just debuted. And it's having issues. And, and, you know, in this project right now, every single day, I mean, you go into Telegram, it's no matter what time you go in there, two in the morning, four in the morning, Wallace is raiding out there with the boys. And it's absolutely mayhem. It's amazing to see that happen.
Yeah, I think um, I think he might have left. Um, yeah, if anything, if anything, uh, I'll reach out to him and try to hit him up and try to if you want to connect you guys together and whatnot. Um, I yeah. have a direct. I have a I have a direct line with him, you know, on Twitter okay. and Telegram. And as I said, I spoke to him uh, the other day um, on the phone. So, all right, awesome. Well, yeah, listen. With that said, I'm gonna wrap everything up. I just want to say once again, huge shout out and thank you to the to the Squid Grow team. You guys are absolutely killing it right now. Uh, shout out to everybody: William Wallace, Huntsman, Bad Anthony, all you guys out there. Uh, uh, even to everybody in Telegram, just rating all the time. You guys are absolutely amazing. Everyone on Twitter, uh, on YouTube, social media, all over the place. Uh, bringing more holders in. Uh, one of the things that was said, I think it was on a Telegram. Everyone saying says we are the bull run. <laughs> They're not wrong. Like. It's so true. It's absolutely insane. No matter what the market is, Squid Grow is doing its own thing and it's just doing such a great job at it. So once again, I just want to say a huge shout out to everybody out there and, and definitely huge shout out to the team for, for you know, coming here today and uh, talking to everybody. Appreciate all you guys. Hey, Joe, thanks for having us, man. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to, to address some of these questions publicly, um, which have not been done. And, uh, you know, just kind of uh, spread the message. You know, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, maybe what we're doing is we'll catch on and, and we'll lead by example, you know, for future projects to come. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having us. It's been a really cool AMA. I really, um, I really like this uh, Twitter spaces. I think they're much better than the Telegram ones. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Big Joe. All right, Joe. Appreciate it. Yeah, much love to everybody. Have a good one, everybody. Take it easy, buddy. Thanks All right, thank you.